Well, Christmas has uh, come around and we thought we'd watch some terrible, weird films. If you find yourself enjoying this video and you've just stumbled across our channel, subscribe and then you can keep up with our videos that will be coming around the mountain. <laughs> and without further ado, let's get on with the video. Yay! In the Christmas tree, we visit a terrifying dead-eyed world in which orphan children have such a depressing life that their only friend is a tree called Mrs. Hopewell. But they had a friend. The pine tree they named Mrs. Hopewell. Yes, Hopewell, because the kids believed that the tree was magical. Mrs. Mavilda, who runs the orphanage, is flat out evil. She gambles their money away and eventually threatens to cut down their beloved tree because apparently they were having too much fun. <laughs> she takes care of us. When I'm scared, I think about her branches like I'm holding me. <laughs> Children are attacked by a bear, lost in a snowstorm, and even fall down a ravine in this heartwarming Christmas classic that teaches us that you always win when you are good. But if you mess with Mrs. Hopewell, Santa will shoot you with lightning. What happened? I don't know. She got struck by lightning. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. I think the first thing we should talk about is the animation, which is absolutely ridiculous. I can't really think of anything I've seen that has worse animation than this. No, I mean, it goes from completely dead looking to all of a sudden these absolutely terrifying expressions that come out of nowhere. <laughs> You're not really sure what the animation artist was really trying to convey half the time. It's just hilarious the way they move, the way they don't move, yeah. the way they don't blink, the way they blink too much. There's this one bit where one of the characters finds out that her daughter is lost in a snowstorm in the mountains and has fallen down a cliff. So she's basically most likely dead. The character's reaction to that is this. She fell from a cliff, Mommy, Daddy, all the way down. The voice acting as well is something that probably should be mentioned. Yeah, they've gone down the route of using young children to voice the young children. It's a well of a tree. That tree. <laughs> it's just they're very mumbly and like they sound very babyish and it's like actually you spend half the film wondering what on earth they're saying, which is pretty funny. Yeah. But it's just like, how did no one in the middle of the process of making this say, could you just do it again, please? Just yeah, kind of but it isn't just the kids. There's also the adults are pretty rubbish in this, especially I'm thinking of the dad. Yeah. I better go now. Take good care of yourself and the children, Judy. I will be back before Christmas. <laughs> I mean, he had such a small part, but he really stood out, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, son, what happened to Lily? It's also really quite a weird story for a it's children's so Christmas weird. special. Kids that are best friends with a tree and no one seems to think that's weird. They've got a name for it, Mrs. Hopewell, which is oddly formal when you think about it. <laughs> I mean, as well, it just seems really weird that Mrs. Mavilda is so evil. If you hate children, why would you wake up in the morning one day and say, I'm going to open an orphanage? If you don't like kids, you don't go near them. Yeah. You don't embrace them into your home and then gamble and drink all the money away. That's <laughs> meant to be looking after them. There goes the children's bread for the week, so said Mrs. Mavilda, laughing with her friends every time she played a hand. I would highly recommend you watch this. It's really, really good. It's only like 40 minutes long and it's absolutely hilarious. It's a perfect combination of badness and weirdness. And it's got that nice Christmas vibe. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Christmas story as old as time itself. A teenage girl finds out her grandfather is also her father and he's a Nazi scientist. It was not traumatic for her at all. I, I would do nothing to hurt my own daughter. She was drugged and unconscious. Combination of fascism and incest not weird enough for you? Well, it gets weirder. Her grandfather created her with the sole purpose of mating her with an evil Christmas elf on Christmas Eve in order to revive the master race of Aryan elf hybrids. The man in the study is your grandfather. And your father! Merry Christmas, everybody. Elves is pretty weird. I found it very grimy and a bit 
grim. Can we start by talking about the story? What is that story? <laughs> what what is that story? Like how and why did they do a Christmas film with that story? It's amazing that someone sat down and wrote it. Nazis, incest, satanic rituals, genetic breeding. What? <laughs> yeah. It- it just felt all a bit sinister, the whole film. It's just, for me, it just, it did have just a bit of a seedy feeling to it. I think the reason for that is that there's not really any humour in it. But I also think that it's very exploitative. There's yeah. this undercurrent of sexual violence and the camera's kind of enjoying it. You just don't feel good about watching it. No. There was definitely some funny lines in it. My cat is the only friend I have left. I mean, the story itself is absolutely ridiculous. Why don't you tell me what you know about the elves? The elves were a genetic engineering experiment. So it wasn't completely horrendous. I think there's an audience for it. The elf is actually well designed. It's kind of black, cracking skin. He wasn't a cute elf. No. He was a really creepy, spooky elf. He was quite, it made me feel a bit sick every time he was on yeah. the screen, which I think was their intention. Yeah. And... There's only one elf in it, so I just want to point that out. It's quite different to the film Elf that exists, though, isn't it? (laughs) I would really love it if I knew that somewhere out there, some kind of mum had accidentally bought elves instead of Elf for their kids to watch at Christmas. (laughs) (sighs) If you want to watch a Christmas film that is literally the opposite of everything that Christmas is, Elves is the one for you. Probably the edgiest film on our list, featuring a scene of Santa getting hit by a car, his loyal mutt almost getting burned to death, and a Jamaican dog who ends every sentence with Mom, let's run like the wind, man! You really are Santa Claus's dog, man! We are of course talking about the search for Santa Paws. Santa and his buddy, Paws, leave the North Pole for a trip to New York, but when he gets knocked unconscious, a homeless man steals his magic crystal, without which Santa will literally die is now clinging to life in a Manhattan hospital. Perhaps the weirdest thing of all is how the talking dogs get sidelined in their own movie to make way for an unconvincing orphan girl and an extremely bland couple who run a toy shop. This is great. Yeah, it was a surprising success. We were searching for our Christmas films. We saw this and thought, oh God, that looks so bad. But it was actually surprisingly hilarious. I mean, it's definitely bad. Let's not say it's not bad. It's really bad. (laughs) But everything about it is just really funny. You're to be careful down there and stick together. I'll watch out for Santa. That's what best friends are for. It had a slow start, but as soon as Santa got hit by that car, it got really good really quickly. What you expect from a Disney film is a certain amount of polish, and I think it does have a bit of polish to it, although it's clearly done on a budget. Yeah. And the other thing you get in Disney films is you usually get quite good songs, but the songs in this film are Absolutely terrible. Yeah, they're really bad. I do believe in Christmas. I believe in love. They were sort of sickly sweet, kind yeah. of saccharine, just and the lyrics were so kind of empty and vapid. Who will sing my song to me? It was so funny because the story was pretty out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Santa gets taken to hospital and he's dying. The whole crew of them go up to like go to hospital and steal him. By that point, you had the elf had come from Santa's land with the elf dog. He had Santa paws, two orphan girls, two shop owners, and a homeless man who stole Santa's crystal in the first <laughs> place. You'd think that the dogs would be the whole point of the film. Actually, they're not really in it that much. There's the kind of awkward moment where you realise that there's these street dogs and one of them's Scottish and is called Haggis and the other one is a Jamaican dog. Help us, man! It's just awkward, isn't it? <laughs> the acting's all really bad. I, I thought before we watched it, it'd be like that bad that you don't enjoy, but it mm. actually was really bad enough to enjoy. I don't know what it was about this film, but yeah, it, it worked. I don't know. It's a pretty tough one to recommend in the sense that it is awful. Yeah, it's, it's poorful. Even. It's poorful. The next film in our sights may be weird, but it's also a festive delight with the jolliest Santa imaginable and the most charmingly inept filmmaking. Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. I mean, that name alone should be enough to sell it. The plot follows a group of totally legit looking Martians who kidnap Santa so he can bring joy to the Martian children. But some Martians aren't happy, as they think Santa's goodwill and joy will make the Martians weak. And so an... um... epic battle? unfolds? Every scene is grade A bad movie goodness, and despite 
its wacky premise, it actually manages to be one of the most traditionally Christmas movies on this list. It's so Christmassy, and I think that the reason for that is that the Santa is just amazing. He, like, yeah. every time he walks into the room, he's like, ho, ho, ho! And he's just constantly just 100% santering the hell out of it. Yeah. Hello, boys and girls! <laughs> uh, As well, the Martians themselves were a delight. The costumes themselves look so funny. Those stupid little things on their head. This, like, sort of half-washed-off green face paint. Very yeah. tight pants. They were very human-like. They didn't sort of... <laughs> do much to try and make them seem more alienish, didn't they? No. Apart from super intelligence, which didn't really come across, <laughs> did it? <laughs> it's kind of like a it's a a better era of film almost. It's not CGI or anything. It's like these guys are aliens. We're literally just gonna slap a bit of green paint on them and that's it. They're just gonna act exactly the same. <laughs> just that's it. They're Martians. <laughs> I think it just had that real charm of like an old B movie. The sweet innocence. And that's the sort of thing I love about B movies, that kind of like sweet charm of... <laughs> yeah. You know, it does bring to mind Ed Wood type films, but actually the, this film's a bit more competently made than that. You've got these really funny bits. I know you really like the polar bear, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. He looked really bad. It was really cute. It was really sweet, though. And you had, the, like, the giant robot. The giant... Oh, um, the robot. I forgot about the robot. Oh, my God. You know, I enjoyed the sets as well. I loved the little toy factory thing that Santa yeah. made on Mars. Like, on the, on the ship. Yeah. It was really sweet. It was sort of making all the little toys. Do you know what? The film has a lot of heart. It's a lot of goodwill. It's just a perfect Christmas film. Yeah. Oh, oh. It is obviously a bad movie, but I can't help but just see it as like an amazing movie. Like yeah. I don't really want to <laughs> criticize it. <laughs> no, the thing is, we spend our lives watching bad movies. This is a brilliant one. It was beautiful. I would watch it <laughs> every Christmas. Bah. What nonsense. I think there's some really actually fantastic quotable lines in it, especially from the evil moustached Martian who just says all these yeah. real nasty things about <laughs> Santa. All this trouble over a fat little man in a red suit. It's a really odd concept, but it just really works. Yeah. Don't you hate it when you watch a sequel but you can't follow it because you haven't seen the first one yet? This is not a problem for Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. As for your viewing pleasure, around half the runtime is dedicated to recycling footage from the first instalment, meaning you become fully caught up and ready to enjoy the action. And what action it is, as we follow our hero, a deranged killer whose Christmas-based PTSD makes him a festive menace. From the infamous Garbage Day scene to the showdown where he fights an elderly wheelchair-bound nun with a massive axe, this is one Christmas treat you won't want to miss. When we were deciding on doing a Christmas special, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 was like the first thing. It was like no matter what list we end up doing, whatever, that it was going to end up on it. Yeah, this is one of our favourite bad movies. If you haven't seen it, you might be aware of a certain scene from it that's quite famous, which is the famous Garbage Day scene. <laughs> Garbage Day! It's actually a really funny, bad Christmas movie. It's so much more than Garbage Day. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about it is Ricky, who's like the main guy in it. He's absolutely awful at acting, but he's so into his role. He's made this character his own. Mm. He's very dramatic. And he has this sort of, this voice the whole way through. He's just yeah. like telling the story, even when he's not telling a story anymore. Every time he does anything, his eyebrows are going like mad. He's got this manic stare as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to give a bit of background to it, they've got Silent Night, Deadly Night 1. And that film didn't actually make that much money. And then they got this other director and they said, can you re-edit shots from the first film and pass it off as a sequel? I don't know, he must have had some integrity because he then actually said, no, I'm going to make this an actual film. And he did a bit of filming. That is why around half the film is literally just reused footage from the first film. For me, I'm pleased, you know, I don't have to watch Silent Night, Deadly Night 1. I got a beautiful recap from yeah. Ricky. <laughs> it's a real epic life story. You see him from a baby to literally his death. <laughs> this is not just one to watch at Christmas, is it? You can watch this any time of year. Yeah. Can you think of any occasion when it isn't good to watch a man dressed as Santa fighting a nun in a wheelchair with an axe? I can literally think of no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the scenes revolve around this guy's kind of madness, don't they? I just love it when he sort of... 
Cody just goes, naughty. <laughs> he does some good Amazing. kills as well, doesn't he? He's got that one where he stabs someone with an umbrella. Naughty. I think that's quite an iconic death, isn't it? And yeah. Yeah. This is just a great film. It's a great, great film. And by that we mean it's absolutely terrible, but funny. Although we have horror films in this video, the true horror lies in the 1948 children's short, Santa in Animal Land. There is no Santa for animals! I don't think we even need to explain this one. Just look at it. If you can think of anything more hellish, we truly pity you. While supposedly a story about a cat becoming Santa Claus of the animals, it's pretty hard to see this film as anything more than a sick experiment into how far the mind of a viewer can be pushed before insanity sets in. If you think you can handle it, then it's on YouTube in its terrifying 9 minute entirety. Viewer discretion advised. This was absolutely terrifying. This is supposed to be a children's Christmas special, and yet it has got to be the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it's a combination of horrific looking puppets that look like they've been in the wars. And these... Well, it's from the 40s, isn't it? So maybe they literally have been in the wars. <laughs> They're really scary. I mean, sometimes some of their eyes seem to roll upwards. They've sort of got these really like dark look to them. Tell us all about it. I'm unsure what some of the animals yeah. were. And then also you've got the terrible voice acting as well. Oh my god. Surely there must have been some like better options for voiceover people than what they got. Get it, cat. She's smart. Can we talk about Santa? Yes, we can. Santa was horrendous. He <laughs> looks like a, like a zombie Santa or something. He did weirdly look like the Santa in Santa Paws. I really hate the frog. He's a little obnoxious little thing, <laughs> isn't he? Sweep, 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 sweep. Oh, out of my way, bird. Gotta get cleaned up for Christmas. I wouldn't show this to any children. I wouldn't put children anywhere near this. I don't think I ever want to watch it again. Mm -mm. I don't even think about it anymore. <laughs> Well, you made it to the end. Thank you very much for watching. It's been really fun going through this list. We watched a lot of terrible Christmas movies, but it was a lot of fun. And yeah, Christmas is very near. I'm kind of in a Christmas mood, but then I keep getting flashbacks of the weird puppets. Yeah, don't think about them anymore. <laughs> don't think about them. <laughs> don't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to eat these now. We've been trying not to eat them, but now we are going to eat them. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and please subscribe and please leave us a comment. And please have a very good Christmas. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'll tell you the mince pie.